Hello and welcome to You Have Control. Today we are going to start looking at exercise 12, the takeoff, landing and circuit training. The aim of this exercise is to take off, depart and rejoin the circuit, to fly a circuit pattern and land, as well as to be able to manage related emergencies and unsafe conditions. This is a very large exercise, so we're going to split it up into a bunch of parts. And the first part we are going to actually look at is taking off and landing. We are now going to look at the takeoff. Assuming that we have got our clearance to enter the runway and all our checks are done beforehand, we're going to use the power and the rudder pedals to steer the aircraft onto the runway. Obviously, as we turn onto the runway, check to the left or the right making sure there's nothing coming in on final once we're now on the runway use your rudder to centralize the nose along the center line move your vision down the center of the runway and past the end of the runway set a reference point this reference point past the end of the runway will create an imaginary line down the center which we will use to keep the aircraft in the center all the way until we are in the air. We are now going to move our eyes halfway down the runway. We are going to set an abort point. This abort point will allow us to prepare for any eventualities that could occur during the takeoff run, such as an engine failure after takeoff or an engine failure before takeoff. If the engine fails before we have passed this abort point, we will simply come to a stop on the runway. However, if the engine fails after takeoff, we will lower the nose and we will do whatever procedure we can to bring the aircraft onto the ground safely. Bring your eyes now into the cockpit and we will start from the top. Look at the flap handle and make sure you have the correct stage of flap selected for takeoff. In the C-42 this is usually no stages or one stage of flap, dependent on both wind and runway conditions. Make sure your trim is set correctly and bring the stick into the center but slightly aft. Have one final check of the temperatures and pressures and now we are ready for takeoff. At this point you should not have any brakes. Start easing the power forward to around 50%. Use your feet to counter the slipstream effect and maintain your course along the center. This is where the reference point will come in handy. As and when you are comfortable, start easing the power all the way to 100%. At the same time, ease the stick rearwards. You want to get the nose wheel off the ground as early as possible. Have a quick glance at your airspeed indicator, making sure that it is alive. And at this point, the rear wheels should unstick from the ground. Gently lower the nose so we are now flying along the ground until our airspeed reaches a suitable value for a climb. We will now ease the stick back, maintaining balance and maintaining our center line, and we will climb out at an appropriate speed. Have another quick glance at your airspeed and this time at your temperatures and pressures. You want to make sure that your engine is behaving properly. Once you are away from the ground and away from danger, you want to release the flaps. Let your airspeed increase and continue the climb. We want to climb up to our appropriate altitudes, which could be the circuit height, or we could be leaving the circuit. Now we're going to talk about how to put the thing on the ground safely. If you get this first time, well done to you. Let's get the aircraft into the landing configuration. We're going to slow the aircraft down by raising the nose. We're going to lower the flaps one stage at a time, nice and gently. And on the second stage of flaps in the C-42, we're going to trim the nose down to maintain a good airspeed. If we take our stall speed, times it by 1.3, and then add half of what the wind is, we will get a very good approach speed. We're going to turn on to final, and now this is where the fun begins. Look at the runway. We're going to be aiming for the numbers. The numbers on the ground will be what's known as our point of zero movement. As we approach the numbers, they will stay at the same part of our screen. 
They may get bigger, but as long as they are not moving, then things should be looking good. If you start to see them move up the screen, it means the aircraft is descending a bit too quickly. And if they are moving down the screen, we are not descending fast enough or we could be climbing. This is where the power comes in. We will use our power to control our rate of descent and we will use our pitch control, the elevator, to control our airspeed. What is really important is that we use the rudder to keep ourselves on the center line and only use the ailerons if there is a big wing drop or if we need to make a major adjustment. At this point we will be approaching the runway rather rapidly and you need to ask yourself the question, is it safe to land? Is there something ahead of you? Is there an obstruction on the runway? Or is your approach rather interesting, you could say? If you answered yes to any of these questions, go around. You will soon be passing over the runway numbers and your view will need to transition from the numbers towards the end of the runway. The reason for this is because you will be using your peripheral vision to land the aircraft. We will now enter the roundout phase where we will start easing the stick back. We don't want to ease the stick back too much because then we can stall the aircraft, which we do not want to do at any phase throughout the landing. The whole point of the roundout is not to land and not to put the wheels on the ground, but rather to just reduce our rate of descent. At the end of the roundout, we only want to be a couple of feet away from the ground, and then we can start the hold off or flare. At this point, our power should be on the idle setting. We're going to raise the nose, so we're not climbing, but we're not descending. We're using the wings to create drag and to slow the aircraft down. If you pull the stick back too much, we will climb again, and that can be dangerous if we stall. If you don't pull the nose up enough, then there will be a lovely thud, which could indicate that you have landed a tad too hard. It's important to keep using the rudder to maintain our direction along the center line, and we do not want to let that front nose wheel touch the ground. As we continuously slow down, keep that stick coming back. We just want to let the aircraft sink onto the ground. Once those rear wheels only touch the ground, we know we have done a good job. However, we haven't finished yet. Do not let that nose touch the ground until there is not enough airflow going over the elevator to support the nose in the air. The nose will gently come down and once the nose has touched the ground, we can apply brakes if necessary or let the aircraft roll until we can vacate the runway. Be careful not to lock the brakes because that can cause damage. Now, let's look at the airmanship side of taking off and landing. Your instructor will go through the pre-takeoff and after landing checks with you. Make sure to remember these, but always use your checklist, no matter if you know the checklist off by heart. And as we said earlier, do not be afraid to go around. If you think it's a good idea to go around and your instructor hasn't said anything, tell them. Thank you once again for watching this video. The next video we will look at the circuit pattern, radio calls and checks. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content. Fly safe.